Hello everyone out there. Today I'm going to be talking about my first impressions of The Boys Season 3, the first three episodes. So let's roll that intro. Welcome to Nerdy by Nature. I am your host, Alanis Maximus. And as mentioned before the credits today, we're going to talk about the first three episodes of The Boys Season 3 uh, and some things I enjoyed about it some references I noticed and yeah, just a bit of a chat on, on what we saw there as it was pretty goddamn phenomenal. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say this is kicking off to be the best season in this show so far. Uh, I think it kind of, the first season was cool. Didn't really grab me at first, but kind of revved up. Second really carried that momentum. And this one is just really hitting at home so far. Like it's been pretty nonstop enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I was, I was glued to my seat. I power watched it all um, and it, it flew by. Uh, so without further ado, though, some of the things um, I liked about it, uh, we saw as, as, as we pretty much knew we were going to, Supersonic introduced. And as there was speculation, this is confirmed to be Drummer Boy. Uh, Supersonic used to be in a boy band and go by the name Drummer Boy. He's obviously dumped that kind of uh that name uh for a bit more of a cool name like supersonic uh now there's some differences from the comics here in the comics he was a bit of a dick he cheated on starlight in the show he seems to be a lot nicer they have a much better history uh and he's pretty much showing that he's willing to do anything for her uh even by joining the seven and putting himself in harm's way to be there to support her now this I think could quite well serve to drive a bit of a wedge between Starlight and Huey and with Huey getting jealous. And I think um, it will see things like him maybe abusing uh, Compound V24. Another thing um, I was pleasantly surprised to see in like the, the follow-up is Stormfront is there. She's obviously kicked out of the seven struggling to hold on to life, mangled and in a hospital bed. She's pursuing a kind of bizarre relationship with with Homelander. Uh, and later on, in which we'll touch on more, she does end up, what it seems, committing suicide by biting off her own tongue. Now, I'm not sold that she's necessarily dead. Um, I mean, she might be, I could be wrong, but I don't, I'm just not entirely sure this is the last we're going to be seeing of that character. But you never know. As I say a lot when we're talking about this speculation, you never know. Uh, now, another thing I really enjoyed is we learned a lot more in these three episodes about uh, Victoria or Nadia. Uh, she is a government plant by Vought. Um, what's looking like to get a footing in the White House and in politics. Now she is pretty much a, uh, a based on the comic book character, Victor Newman, who is a vault worker who becomes a vice president and after the president is killed, becomes the president. So I think if not in this season, but in the future, we're gonna see that unfold for Victoria. We're gonna see her probably ascend to vice presidency or presidency after the president is murdered. Now, touching on uh, Compound V24 being introduced, in the comics, it's a main plot line. Uh, the boys use it to, to level the playing field going up against soups. Uh, now, as well, we do see this begin in the show. Uh, we see Butcher take it to confront uh, Gunpowder in a very cool, gruesome scene. Uh, one of my favorites of the show that that sequence really enjoyable uh and yeah i think we're definitely going to be seeing more of that as as the series progresses another thing uh, that i really liked is and i want to see more of uh as i like the idea of the team is the g-men now we saw the initial kind of uh glimpse at blue hawk uh, in an interview, which I think is going to be the, the comparative of, of Groundhog from the comics. Uh, they also, in a conversation in passing between uh, Huey and Victoria, uh, she mentions uh, Cold Snap, Stacker, and Airburst, who are also G-Men characters. So 
looking forward to maybe along the lines this season on the next seeing a bit more elaborated there and uh, seeing some more of that coming into it as, as I'd like to know a bit more about that team and how it's translated into the series. Now we did also get a very nice flashback kind of scene when the boys confront Mallory. Uh, she reveals a bit of backstory involving payback and the CIA's attempt to use uh, superheroes as in their military capacity. Uh, it shows that they're relatively useless and kind of the events you see kind of dissuade the military from using them. Uh, in the flashback, you also get some um, elaboration on the backstory of Black Noir, why he's disfigured, why he wears a full face mask, and why he is, why he is. <clears throat> and it's obviously very different from the comics where in the comics, Black Noir is a clone of of Homelander. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to see a bit of um, expansion on the character for the series. Uh, in the same flashback, uh, we also see Soldier Boy in action, uh, Jensen Ackles, and his very Captain America-like parody. Uh, now, in this, show, uh, this sequence, it's uh, said that uh, he was taken down by some kind of weapon, and the Russians took his body. Now, I've got a couple of theories. Um, the boys are going to go across and, as in the trailer, are going to see recover him, see him kind of come out of the, the tank capsule kind of thing. Uh, I think we're either going to see that it is Soldier Boy in a kind of Winter Soldier-esque parody, he's a living weapon, or it could maybe be a clone of Soldier Boy. Uh, but, yeah, that's... Um, very cool. I love Jensen Ackles, always have, and we're going to see, be seeing some great stuff uh, from this character, I reckon. Now, uh, going back to the subject of Homelander, uh, we see a lot from him and progression in his character. After Stormfront's suicide, or supposed suicide, and Starlight being appointed the co-captain of the Seven, uh, we see him kind of have a bit of an outburst on the TV show American Hero, which in turn gives him some popularity. Uh, which was which was a nice nice twist. Um, we also see in the scene where he's talking with Starlight some foreshadowing of a likely plunge off the deep end. He kind of gets she threatens him with with exposing him with the the airplane footage from the first season, and he kind of responds to that with "I don't care, I can do what I want," and mentions pretty much going postal. Uh, so I think we're going to be seeing that sooner rather than later. Uh, and he's also on a very clever mission to destroy Starlight. Now, he can't do that physically because she's too popular, uh, so he's trying to do that mentally. Uh, one attempt we saw was having on the American Hero show uh, Starlight sing happy birthday to him in a very Mar Marilyn Monroe way, uh, and with backup dancers wearing the, the kind of really revealing costume that was put forward to her in previous seasons, so just really trying to make attempts to demean her. Um, which obviously doesn't go ahead. Uh, but he, then later on, he also uh, announces that they're in a relationship together, a fake relationship, essentially. So that's putting pressure on her, trying to break her apart. I think it's also going to drive that wedge I mentioned before between Hugh and Starlight in terms of jealousy, things like that. So, yeah, um, some very interesting stuff on the cards for the rest of the season. I reckon season's moving forward as well. Now, lastly, uh, I'd like to do a little bit of a list, uh, and I'm going to say my top five kind of references to the comic world I think I picked up on there. Uh, some of them might be a bit of a stretch, but I don't know. I, I kind of, my ears pricked up. So, yeah, at number five starting off, uh, Stormfront and Homelander have a dialogue where he kind of mentions being alone, and... She mentions that he's not alone. I reckon this is a little bit of a sneaky uh, throwback to Avengers Infinity War from the Black Widow line um, in the fight scene with, with Scarlet Witch and, and herself. Coming in at number four, uh, we see the cliche powers clash. You see it in every second or third superhero movie where the good guy shoots his powers, the bad guy shoots theirs and they clash in the middle, and it's that whole duel. 
I think that was a bit of a reference to that. It's in everything, so I reckon they put it in there. Uh, maybe highlighting how sometimes it can be a bit overplayed and tacky. At number three, uh, now we had a reference uh, at the premiere of the movie in in series movie, The Dawn of the Seven. We had a reference to the Burke cut needing to be released. Now this is definitely a direct reference to the Snyder cut for the Justice League. I found it pretty funny that they put that in there and kind of gave a nod in that direction. At number two, uh, this one was particularly cool. Uh, Black Noir is reference to having destroyed a cafe in Lagos. Now, Lagos is the locale that Scarlet Witch kills innocent people by accident in Captain America's Civil War. So being the massive Marvel nerd I am, this was... I think pretty blatant uh, kind of a reference there, and I, I like that because I like Marvel. And last and definitely not least at number one, we have the dick scene. Now, around the time in between Infinity War and Endgame, you probably remember the memes and jokes about Ant-Man shrinking and going up Thanos' ass. Now, in the opening moments of the first episode of this show, we saw an Ant-Man parody termite shrink and go inside a dude's dick it was something it, it left me equally impressed and disturbed and not only did he go in this dick but he sneezes and he expands rapidly and pretty much rips the dude in half in a very interestingly gory scene i think if there's a reason to watch this show that might be it because it is bloody hilarious and yeah Maybe a little unsettling for some, but give it a shot. But anyway, that and a lot of other reasons, this season is just looking goddamn phenomenal. Uh, I reckon if you haven't, watch the first seasons, get up to speed, and then start on this because it's it's really good. It's really come into a fine form. Um, and it was never bad, but it's just, it's just snowballed. It just keeps getting better and better. And... I can't see that momentum stopping anytime soon. But that's that's my initial kind of takeaways from the first three episodes. May touch on more at the end of the season or as the season progresses. We'll see how we go. Uh, but yeah, and lastly, I'd like to just thank everyone for subscribing, liking, sharing, showing us the love. We're going to be doing more giveaways to pay that back to you. Um, but yeah, it's just going phenomenally well for, for Lab Media right now. And myself and the rest of the guys really appreciate it and really love it so remember if you haven't hit that subscribe button hit that like button let the people know about us get onto our socials um you'll find out some more stuff that we necessarily won't convey by the youtube there and yeah stay up to date but yeah until then uh from myself alanis maximus stay good guys stay good